You're listening to The Man Maker Show. Welcome to Season 1 with your host, Brad Walgamon. This podcast is all about becoming a better man for ourselves and the people around us. So if you enjoy this episode, whether you're on your way to work or mowing the lawn, make sure to share this with somebody, like, and subscribe. Well, I hope you're ready, because here we go. Welcome to the Man Maker Show. Hope you're doing incredible. Bradley Wogamai here coming to you again with another episode of the Man Maker Show. I am coming to you from the beautiful Rio Mar Hotel in San, near San Juan, Puerto Rico. Beautiful weather, palm trees, oceans, what's more inspiring than that? I have a really powerful message for you this afternoon and I hope I can get this. It's a seven point message and that's really difficult to keep in under 20 minutes, let alone three or four hours. I've taught this subject around the world many, many times in many languages through translators, of course. So it usually takes a few hours. I'm gonna give it to you in highlights and then I think in future episodes I would take these seven keys and break them down one by one. But I'm gonna call these the seven steps to legacy. And I would hope that everybody has a legacy mindset. A legacy mindset says when you're gone, what will people say, right? It's been written that we all talk about the dash, right? We won't talk about when you were born. We won't talk about how you died. We're gonna talk about how you lived. Right? We'll record the day you're born and we'll record the day we die, but what we really want to talk about is how you lived. And if we lived in such a way, our life has a greater message after life, meaning the meaning of our life, the use of our life is better than our life. My mother, before she passed away, gave me a message and it was the night before she passed away. We didn't know she was going to pass away. She was recovering from uh, significant 10 hour heart surgery and I was in hospice and doing better. And maybe hospice isn't the pro proper term, but some kind of a care facility wasn't the hospital anymore. And she grabbed my hand with her little crippled little arthritic fingers and she said, Bradley, promise me one thing. I'm like, mom, I'll promise you anything. What, what, what? Promise me the use of your life will outlast your life. I'll never forget it forever, as nor should I. I'll never forget my mom because she was the hero of my life, the single greatest human being I ever met. Of course, she raised me, so I feel that way, but the impact she made in my life was so significant. And so really, I'm talking about legacy because legacy is what is done with the message of your life when your life is done. And it's really sad and unfortunate that most people, the only legacy they have is their genetic code. There wasn't a message to their life. There wasn't a meaning in their life. There weren't people that were impacted along the way. They lived and they died and away they go, right? I had a friend of mine recently call me one of his Palm 5. And Palm 5 is, I didn't know what that was at the time, but he says, you're one of the five that I carry in my, my casket. And that's a pretty powerful, honorable place to be. It's kind of like being someone's best man. It's pretty significant. And I thought about that because I guess I've impacted his life in a positive way. And I hope that every one of you man makers that want to be men have a desire to leave a message to your life. That when you're gone, what will be the echo of your life? Because frankly, the people that you impact in your life will be the echo, right, of your actions. And so our life is a sum total of the choices we make in our life, right? And I know people for some reason politically today don't think that's the case, but the fact of the matter is you are in power, in, in control, the powerful source of your life. And we could go into great depth in that topic, and I won't because we just don't have the time frame today. We will in future times. But effectively, this is how our life works. Thoughts become words. Words become action. Actions become habits. Habits create character. Character creates your destiny and your destiny ultimately becomes your legacy. So thoughts, words, action, habit, character, legacy, destiny, legacy. So everything starts in our world as a thought and we need to take our own thoughts into captivity. What, what does that mean? That means that I choose what I'm gonna think about. Now, when someone's yelling at me, it's hard for me to think something different so I need to remove myself from that noise. When I was in the real struggle bus days of my life, one of my mentors said, Brad, what you need to do is you need to quiet your mind. There was that samurai movie, uh, I think it was a Tom Cruise movie, 
And he said, your problem is too many minds. You need to cut the noise down, lower the noise and make the noise only that which serves you. So my thoughts is what creates my life. What creates thoughts, the previous most important piece of this is input. And I have to think about the input. Input is what? That's the people I listen to. That's the audios, the books I read, the association I have. Because stuff comes in, I can't say purple dinosaur without you thinking purple dinosaur. I said it, you thought it. So the more things you hear, the more things you think about. And we think at 300 words a minute, but we talk at 150 roughly. So what comes into our mind dictates what we think about. So input, it becomes so important. And it's amazing to me how many people just are, that's the word I'm looking for. They're just, they're, they're unaware of what's happening in their world. You look at little children and every child is beautiful and amazing and awesome. But the input begins to shape them by three or four or five. Yelling and screaming and temper tantrums and pouting. And, and if kids are unruly, it's because that's the environment they're in or that's what has been allowed to happen in their life. They're, they're just moldable pieces of clay. And granted, we all, every kid has its own little nuances and their own distinct personalities. 100%, I totally agree with that. I've raised five, I, I totally get it. But for the most part, we are a sponge to our environment. So we could, we could debate that point, and I won't do it for now, but let's just go on into junior high, high school, college. If you got into things that you weren't wanting to be involved in, say drugs or alcohol or partying, it's probably because you were in an environment. Most of the things we've done that we wish we hadn't done somehow came to us. And you look at the power of the internet and the amount of information comes at us and barrages us every single day input. If we don't put filters on our phones and on our computers and on our TVs, we're going to get bombed with sexuality. We're going to get bombed with all kinds of messaging. I won't get into that topic tonight, but messaging that is not consistent to probably the man or woman that you want to be. And so you have to guard your mind. You have to build, I call it the dome of shalom. You need to build a, 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 something around you that protects your mind, that only things that come in serve you. I don't see scary movies. You know why I don't see scary movies? Because I live in the woods, <laughs> okay? I've seen enough movies where the bad guys come out of the woods and I'm not going to see it, right? I now live in a ranch and a farm and I purposely won't grow corn. You know why? Because I've seen the children of the corn, right? I'm not going to expose myself to things that are going to constantly bomb me. And the more I knew that, the less scary movies I started seeing. Right? I don't like to see movies with a lot of pornography in it. Sometimes it's inescapable for the most part. I don't like it. And so I either fast forward or get off it or turn away. And go, oh, come on, you're not that good. And I'm not that good all the time. I'm not gonna act like I'm good at two shoes, but I'm gonna protect my mind to not let things in that are gonna corrupt my mind. Because my input creates the, the stuff that floats around in here. If I'm learning a language or an instrument or what have you, it comes in and creates thoughts. Now, here's where it becomes powerful. When thoughts become words. When I start speaking, the Bible says the power of life and death lie in the tongue. That the seed we speak is the seed we sow. This is why affirmations have been proven so strong over the years. That you speak what you want to be as though it is. That isn't lying. That is confession of what you want to be. Right? Claiming health. Claiming victory. Claiming favor. Claiming God's love claiming prosperity for your family and life and health. Speak it. We talked about in earlier episodes. If you don't speak it, you're gonna allow, your, you're gonna allow yourself to be bombed by more than likely what the world comes at you is with, you can't, you shouldn't, oh, don't get your hopes up, what makes you think you can do that? All these limiting beliefs and those don't serve me. Now I may not get everything I confess, but I'm certainly very rarely gonna get anything I don't confess. I'm never going to all of a sudden surprise myself with dynamic success if I don't speak it and claim it. Because when I speak it, my body immediately goes to work to find a way to make it so. If I'm cold and I say I'm cold, I'm starting to shake and colder. If I say I'm warm, I'm warm, I'm warm, guess what? I'm going to start moving and rubbing myself and working to find ways to make my spoken word come true. If you've ever been in sports and you start getting down on yourself, you're going to play worse because you're down on yourself. And so therefore your body comes in submission to your spoken word. This is why I don't allow myself to say things that are not consistent with what I want. A lot of people will say, don't get your hopes up. High hopes are just disappointments waiting to happen. Well, that's garbage. Get your hopes up, get them as high as you can. 
Keep your feet rooted on the ground, but, but, but reaching for heaven, expect a miracle. And if you don't get it, then you go, well, there's a different miracle in play. When I ask for things, I don't get them, I realize I'm supposed to get something else or something better. Some of the best unanswered prayers of my life were some of the greatest blessings of all time. But I'm gonna speak what I want as though it is. I am gonna confess it because my words put me in action. And I hear a lot of guys say, well, I'm just kind of a quiet guy. I'm not gonna say anything. I'm just kind of like, you know, covertly. I'm gonna be like a submarine success person. I'm not gonna say anything and tell anything. I'm just gonna show up and ta-da. And I'm gonna tell you something. I've never seen in my life. And I've seen a lot of success and failure. I see them go under and stay under. And I think people say that Sometimes they think it, they might think it's true, but for the most part, I think they're unconfident. They're afraid that if they say it and don't do it, that they'll look bad. And I say, if you don't make it, you might look bad anyways. And I'm talking about succeeding and prospering for your family and doing great things to help your community. We need to be successful. We need to be significant. We need to be prosperous. We need to help this world out. The problem with this world is too many good people doing nothing. I think that's written at the Statue of Liberty on the base, it says, Let's say Sir Edmund something said, it says, all it takes for the forces of evil to rule this world are for enough good people to do nothing. And for some reason, people think nothing is a safe place. And we'll talk about that in a different episode in the future because it is not the safe place. In fact, it's almost the only place that guarantees you won't make it. You've got to confess it because your words lead to action. And if your actions are taken enough times, that's what we call a habit. A habit is an action taken again and again and again and again and again and again and again. I was talking earlier in other episodes about learning to play guitar. It's, it, it, some people might be natural and they can pick up quicker than others. Me, I'm not. And I have to go G, 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 E, 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 F, 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 C, 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 D, D, D. Right? It's terrible. No one wants to hear me learn to play guitar. I'm awful. But it's repetition. I had a guy uh, in Mexico last week with our family and uh, kind of a casual friend of ours and, and came up to the table and we were, he's a waiter and we were chatting and, and Chosen said, hola. And he goes, oh, you're learning Spanish. I teach Spanish. I got to teach you my website. I teach the pronunciation letters. Ah, 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 a, ah, 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 ba, b, ba, ba, bo, c, c. <laughs> and he was basically saying all the different ways to say the letters because if you learn the letters, then you can say the words. And I can remember like when I was a kid, you had to rewrite the letter again and again and again. I love paper with little lines on it. I never did do very good at that. But it's repetition of actions that create habits. Any habit you have at this point in your life is a single solitary action once and then repeated. I've been around a lot of people, a lot of people with significant addictions, like horrible addiction, addictions. And there was a scene in my life when I was kind of judgmental of that. And I thought, man, how could you let that happen in your life? What in the world? And then, I don't know if it was God came to me, spoke to me, or it was just an awareness, but instead of seeing that addict, I saw a broken, hurting person at one point choosing a drug or an alcohol to medicate. And I started to see the pain that came before the addiction. I came to see the brokenness. When I see some on the street, I remember years ago, I was in a car being hosted by a couple in San, San Diego, and this homeless person walks across the street really, really slow, stop traffic, pushing the cart. And I'm like, man, we're in a hurry. We're gonna get there, I'm gonna be late. And he's just quietly waiting and quietly waiting. About halfway through it, he says, that precious person, precious person. And then I thought to myself, there it is. What he saw was the brokenness. At what point did that person choose the street? At what person, at what point did that person get to that place? What? What was a single solitary moment or moments, habits, single solitary actions becoming habits that led them to a point where it was who they are? And that's the definition of character. Character came from the word etched in stone. If you've ever watched a play and an actor, they are playing a character. And when they are really good at that character, you really believe that that action is really happening. A really good character can, can convince you that they're being chased by a monster or they're in a car scene or there's some horrific thing happening or some sporting event. And the reality, it's a controlled environment. It's a theater with you know, dozens, if not hundreds of people around. It's been practiced and scripted dozens of times. There's nothing real about it. But they're so good at their character that we're convinced that it's real. So your character 
is something that is really anchored in. And there's people that say you can't change your character. They say a zebra can't change his stripes. Well, I don't believe that. The reason I don't believe it is because I don't think anybody's born with the character they have as an adult. I believe there's goodness, there's pureness, there's God's grace and presence in the baby. And throughout life, we become a result of our input, thoughts, words, action, habit, character. And the character becomes what we carry around. Character is defined by the things you do when no one knows what you're doing. In your quiet space, in that quiet time, when no one's watching, where does your mind go? What do you do when you can do anything and no one's gonna know? I can remember shameful times of my life and I'm like, you know, I'm not real proud of that. Why is my character messed up? And I can tell you the only way I've been able to change my character is to go all the way back to the beginning and change the input. You see, in the past, I try to change my character by changing my actions. I just won't take that action. I won't do that anymore. And a lot of people call it foxhole Christians and they're in trouble and they pray out to God, please God, if you get me out of this problem, I'll never do it again. And what happens? They get out of the problem, a few weeks go by and they find themselves back in the exact same situation. Why? Because they didn't go back to the core source. The core source is input, input, input. If you wanna change the way you live, you must change the way you think. If you wanna change the way you think, you gotta change the story you're listening to. I was at a motivational event many years ago and this great speaker, a great orator, those powerful voices, and he's like, do you wanna change your life? And I'm like, yeah. Do you wanna change your life? And he went like 10 times and I'm not prone to being hyped and not prone to kind of going crazy with a speaker, but I did it. I'm like, yeah, whole crowd's going, yeah, yeah, we're gonna change your life, yeah. And he says, you wanna know the secret? I'm like, yeah, he goes, change your life. <laughs> I'm like, that's it? It's that simple? And I was kind of mad. I'm, 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 I, was, I was more than kind of mad. I can remember for a couple days driving around, I was doing my job, and, Living life, I'm like, you know, change your life, change your life. I change your life. I was so mad that he kind of duped me in this stupid message. And then it occurred to me, if you want to change your life, you got to change your life. You know what that means? Change the input. Change the machine. Change what you're listening to. If you don't like what's coming out of your mouth, then change what's going on in your brain. The way you change going on your brain, change what you're listening to. And you might have to really spend some time on this. If you find yourself complaining about stuff, about people, weather, politics, sports, community, neighbors, if you're in that mode, then you have to change how way you think because what's coming out of your mouth is pollution. And I don't want that to come out of my mouth. I want my mouth to be something that is serving and empowering and uplifting and doing something for people. And I'm not perfect. I can be the biggest whiner on the planet. I can cuss and swear a blue streak. I'm not proud of those things. I'm not perfect. Don't get me wrong. Like, oh my gosh, Brad, thank you. I'm not. I made all these mistakes. But I can tell you by making a conscious effort to be aware of what goes in my brain, that it changes what I'm processing all day, which changes what I begin to talk about, right? Try studying something. I've said this for, for years. You know how someone's working out? They tell you. Why? Because they're doing it all the time, so they start talking about it, thinking about it. Their legs are sore, their back sore. Is it legs day, is it arm day, is it chest day? What's going on? You know, protein and water and hydration and stretching. You're in it, so you talk about it. So if you wanna change the character of your life, then change your input and get radical about it. Don't allow anything in your life to come into your brain that will process it, it will Process it. Don't allow anything. Go to your phone and take every single app off your phone that leads to whatever your issue is. If it's pornography, or if it's gambling, or it's obesity, or it's anger, or it's resentment, or it's gambling, or it's narcissism, or whatever, check your input and get rid of it. There's nothing out there that is more important than cleaning up the way you think because it's gonna destroy your life. And I, I, what, what I mean by that is, when you're gone, is there any echo into eternity? Is there any message? Your destiny 
is how you're gonna be in the next 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 80, 100, right? It's a line. Somewhere between here, there is life. The, the, we're in the middle here somewhere, but what's gonna determine how this last half goes is the input that I keep consuming, which changes my forward progress in my life. If I don't change the way I think, I won't change the way I speak. I won't change the way I speak, I won't change the way I act. If I don't change the way I act, I'm not gonna change the fruit that I'm developing in my life, which is my habit, my character, my destiny, which ultimately leads to the big goal. And I don't know how many of you are inspired by the concept of legacy, but I'd like to challenge you men to think legacy. I'd like you to think about your children's children's children. The Bible tells us to think about that. And if you're not a Bible believer, that's fine. I still believe in all of us, we would like to say that we mattered. In fact, I've heard that the greatest fear of man is the fear of not being missed. I can't remember who said that. Mm, I should remember the author, but it was a TED talk. The, the, the fear of being insignificant, the fear of no one caring that you lived. In fact, let's be honest, I think you could define suicide by someone that thinks they matter so little that it won't matter if they're here or not. That the ultimate pinnacle of depression, it means it won't matter if I'm alive or dead. I might as well be dead. So I think innately all of us have this desire to be remembered, but we don't always understand that life is a sequence. It's a pattern. Five years from now, this may be the dumbest thing you've ever heard, but here it is. Five years from now, today will be five years ago. And you'll look back at today, five years from now, as five years ago, and you'll be held accountable to the choices you made five years from now and the choices you made today. The choices you make today impact the man you'll be five years from now, five minutes from now, five weeks from now, five months from now, five years ago. The legacy of your life will be determined by the choices that you make. That's really good news. The bad news is the future is up to you. The good news is the future is up to you. If you choose to take actions with your input, it all starts there. If you manage what goes in every single day, be aware of it, read more, listen more, ask more questions, attend more events, get more input, because then your brain goes to work. The more you think about it, the more you start talking about it, the more you talk about it, the more you do it, the more you do it, the more habitual success and prosperity and strength and wisdom and insight and power and confidence, it all comes from that. It all comes from input, thoughts, words, action, habit, character, destiny, legacy, the message of your life. I pray to God that the message of my life is excellence is a standard, but grace is the word. I have made more mistakes than most people will, probably more than a lot of you. But I hope that I'll not be measured by my mistake. I'll be measured by how I got up from my mistakes, how I learned from my mistakes, how I was transformed by my mistakes. And when I mean measured, measured by God, man will do what man's gonna do. I'm gonna do my best that the balance of my life carries the message of excellence and grace. To forgive myself, to forgive those around me, to hold myself to a standard of excellence and those around me to create greatness. So everything comes into my brain, the audios, the books, the people. If they're not about that, God love you, but you're not part of my input model. I am not gonna subject my things to things that don't lead to the greater use of my life. A man maker, a man that's being made, a man that may be lost, confused, tired, defeated, depressed, lonely, disconnected, bewildered, uncomfortable, abandoned, afraid, ashamed, all these behaviors and these beliefs about ourselves, you can change that. But it won't change by just water on the bridge. It won't change by isolation unless in isolation there is massive input. The key thing is you gotta bring it in let it go so deep that it changes the way you think. And when you change the way you think, you change the way you speak. It's a positive, it's happy, it's forward, it's progress, it's beautiful, it's warm. Things don't happen to me, they happen through me. Every, every challenge serves a royal purpose. Every issue that happens is something to teach me because I'm exactly where I need to be, to learn exactly what I need to know, to get exactly what I've asked for, 
Therefore, everything is working in a way to somehow shape me and make me into a better human being. That's the result of input, thoughts, words, action, habit, character, legacy, destiny in the middle there. Does that make sense? I hope it does. I believe in all my heart if you'll take this message deep into your soul. My call to action to you is inspect your inputs. In fact, I'm going to do it right now when I get down here. I'm going to look at my phone and anything that does not serve me, even social media. Social media cannot serve you. I, I do a lot of training and listening. I get a lot of good information. But every once in a while, sneaky stuff gets in there. Political stuff, discrimination stuff, sexual stuff. It happens. I'm a human being. I know it. Anything that doesn't serve you, anything that doesn't make you a better human being, get rid of it. You got people that are tearing you down? Love them, but put them at distance. You be the bar raiser. You be the person that's thinking, well, how come you don't hang on anymore? Because I need you to increase. I can't stay down to keep you here. I'll talk more about this future. But be a lid lifter. Be a, be a bar raiser. Make people grow to you. You set the standard. Protect your input. Create that dome of shalom. Create that mindset that nothing gets in that doesn't serve what's going to come out. And I believe in doing so, greatness is yours for the future. I hope that helps out. Glad you welcome listen to another version, another episode of the Man Maker Show. Signing out.